Hi everyone, you are in China Inspect channel. This is the second video about the new Redmi K50 smartphone. Today, in that video, I will in details talk about a very important parameter of the smartphone – a display. Personally, the screen is one of the key aspects to make my decision about what I would like to buy because I often use my phone for work and daily life. And if my phone doesn't have a good quality screen, my eyes will tire very fast. So today we will test a new smartphone's screen, and for doing that I will use four tools. My eyes, pulsometer radix, color meter, and another one smartphone. Let's begin. Firstly, let's look at the screen specs. In K50 installed a high-resolution 6.67-inch flat OLED display. The resolution is 3200 per 1440 pixels. There is very high pixel density and high clarity. Also, this screen can support 120Hz when Quad HD and 480Hz refresh rate of the touch screen. I noticed the very thin screen frame, especially on the bottom side, and also the frame looks very symmetrical. It has 8-bit color depth with supporting function HDR10 and HDR10+. So screen colors must be natural and color rendering is good. Another function is an always-on display. It can be set up for 10 seconds or unlimited time mode. Also here is sunline mode for increasing brightness when using the device during the daytime. DC dimming function helps to decrease flickering of low brightness setup. Moreover, K50 has the same function as most new Android phones, such as dark mode, reading mode and so on. Let's check how good the screen is, and we start with brightness. I set up a saturate color scheme because it makes the screen brighter. Its central part shows 750 looks, but the upper part has 770 looks, and the bottom part had the highest result 780 looks. To check maximum parameters, I am going to use a flashlight from another smartphone and light up the light sensor on the top of the screen. The brightness starts to increase till 1000 lux, so there is good result, despite small errors in different parts of the screen. This difference is unvisual by human eyes. Next we check a screen flickering. On the screen I post a result on different brightness level, when 120 Hz and without DC dimming mode. When the screen brightness setting is from 20 to 60 percent, the PWM coefficient has higher rank than normal parameters 10 percent. But the deviation is not so significant. Using DC dimming mode decreases the bad flickering coefficient on the range from 20 to 70 percent brightness. But at high level, that parameters increase a little. We can use any smartphone with Pro, Photo or Video mode to see how DC dimming works. I will use my OnePlus 10 Pro. In order to see screen flickering, we move to Pro mode and choose the shuttering parameters to manual control. Now let's set brightness to 30% and increase shuttering speed. As less speed as wider dark lines on the screen. It looks like the lines are black, but actually it is also white line with lower brightness. So because of contrast it look black. If we turn on DC dimming mode most of the dark lines disappear and only one line is left. If we look at the light signal of the screen deeply, we can see that when 40% brightness without DC dimming, a blue graph signal has a more deterministic form, with a high frequency equal to 500 Hz. That is why the camera showed us so many lines in that mode. When we use the DC dimming function, the PWM changed signal to a more straight line with one drop down every 18 milliseconds. 
so here frequency equal 60 Hz. If we check higher brightness signal, like 80% level, here is the same form of signal with or without DC dimming, just different frequency 120 and 60 Hz. Looking at these graphs, I think for personal use that phone doesn't need a DC dimming function, because without it flickering is ok. Same picture I had on OnePlus 10 Pro and Xiaomi 12, and those phones don't have DC dimming, despite these are higher rank smartphones. But if shooting Redmi K50 by camera, it is possible to find this flickering light, and in that case DC dimming will be useful. Up next we are going to talk about the color scheme. I checked the screen picture quality by color meter, starting from natural scheme mode. Firstly, I checked the gray balance, and here we can see that the default screen has an excess of red color and deficiency of blue. So, to make calibration, I move the color point to an area with blue color and near to green area. After that, balance will be much better. And you can see difference before and after calibration. After that, I checked what the average error of different colors is, and the average delta E parameter was equal to 1. The colors in that mode look more saturated than the target one. This nice result, same I found in Xiaomi 11, but is not as good as in Xiaomi 12. I also checked colors in P3 and sRGB mode, but in natural mode the result was the best. Let's talk about contrast. There is good grey gradient without any visible line and in that test I can view a full grey square in the fifth number. It's normal and has good black depth parameter. Don't need a miss up frequency. The screen is very smooth when using 120Hz mode. It's very cool and comfortable to use. That I can say about 60Hz, especially with DC dimming mode. I can feel and see by eyes blur picture when interface scrolling or swiping, so I highly recommend it using 120Hz mode. Sensor is also comfortable, delay between sensor and screen reaction are minimal and mostly invisible. The last thing I can show you is the power consumption of the screen. I make some approximation measurements, I tested the screen with different setups. The max was set up with brightness 85%, quad HD resolution and 120Hz mode. As a result, screen consume in average 300 mA current. And also I use different other setup in after brightness mode and the current for the screen was from 200 to 250 mA. So from what I can conclude, the Redmi K50 really has one of the best screen in the middle range of smartphones. It has a high brightness resolution and frequency screen with color close to the natural pictures. Display is big and it doesn't have huge frames, also there is quite economic power consumption, which allows user to use phone longer. Next, as a bonus on that video, I will briefly introduce you the Redmi K50 chipset performance. In those tables you can see result of synthetic and game tests. You can stop video to take time to see data. I just made a short review. Dimensity 8100 showed amazing performance, high power, good stability when compared with Snapdragon 888. And here is no high heating, so it's beating Snapdragon 870 in the middle range chipset and also in some case beat 888 Dragon. So I think the Redmi K50 has two big features. First is a hardware from MediaTek and second is a screen from Samsung. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Your question and idea please write in the comments. See you next time.